last week on Legally Kidnapped. Good evening. Our top story this week. In North Carolina, a pissed off dad shoots his daughter's laptop, putting a video on YouTube and setting off the anti-abuse people and the so-called parenting experts. Then he gets visited by cops and CPS agents who decide that everything is okay. North Carolina also deports a father who is an illegal immigrant, then snatches the kids from the mother because she could no longer afford to care for them on her own. And North Carolina lawyers file a claim against the state in a failure to protect case after a 15-month-old dies regardless of multiple calls to the child abuse hotline. The North Carolina food police throw out a kid's turkey sandwich at school, forcing her to eat the school lunch based on the claim that her lunch did not meet USDA requirements. The governor of Colorado wants to fix the child protective industry, who failed to protect 43 kids to death in the last five years. In Connecticut, a judge rules that foster parents can't intervene in a case where the child protective industry was moving forward with proceedings designed to reunify a child with her real father. A California judge opens the children's court to the media. And in Nevada, a CPS watchdog group wants the court to reinstate a lawsuit targeting Clark County's child protective industry after a judge has already booted them out of court a couple times previously. In Florida, the child protective industry is claiming that it is better equipped to spot troubled families a year after the death of Nubia Barahona, while advocates are wondering if any of the changes are working as there are no real signs of improvement. And even David Wilkins, Florida's DCF secretary, is claiming that kids are actually less safe since the Barahona tragedy. In New York, the case where a mother filed a $900 trillion lawsuit against the child protective industry is raising questions about how the court handles mentally ill parents. In Ohio, the child protective industry starts marketing kids on YouTube by allowing them to make videos in search of forever homes. In Georgia, the child protective industry is feeding psychotropic medications to foster kids at much higher rates than the national average. In Georgia's child protective industry is refusing to answer questions about their failures in regards to 35 child deaths where the family was under CPS watch in the past 75 days. In Oklahoma, the state's overuse of children's shelters is worrying national child welfare experts. Scottish investigators find that kids who are bounced around from home to home and move frequently suffer long-term psychological effects, poor health, and behavior problems. In case you're wondering where your tax money is going this year, the $13,000 tax credit for adopted kids is back, and a new poll finds that most Americans support mandating contraception coverage in order to prevent unwanted children. A new study reveals that one in five parents won't read traditional fairy tales to their kids because they think that they're too scary. The United States Senate passes is a bill that would give every stolen child the right to a permanent family, and a new poll suggests that 40% of children may be turning into cyber bullies. The Russian media is claiming that Moscow is about ready to put a halt to international adoptions to the USA over a string of child abuse cases of adopted Russian orphans where the American justice system didn't go far enough at punishing the perpetrators. In China, a foster father is arrested for stealing articles at a flea market due to poverty. In Israel, a dad who claimed that the mother of his kids stole his sperm in order order to become pregnant is ordered to pay child support anyway. And in Malta, a church-run Ethiopian orphanage has decided to put a stop to adopting kids out to single people. Denmark decides to put an end to the 50-50 shared custody arrangement for divorced parents. A new claim emerges that Osama bin Laden didn't want his kids to follow in his footsteps down the path of jihad. In India, an orphanage denies allegations of sexual abuse made by the Child Welfare Committee. In Norway, the battle continues over kids from India who were snatched in a culture dispute as the Norwegian authorities continue to drag ass at handing over custody. The uncle visits the kids and comes back saying that he's traumatized. The grandparents meet with the foreign minister. The parents meet with the kids for the first time in three months. And the Norwegian government promises to make a decision as to where the kids are going by early next month. In Canada this week, a court action by the union representing CFS agents is setting back a public inquiry into the death of a five-year-old who was murdered in foster care back in 2005. A study from the University of British Columbia claims that infant mortality rates would be dramatically improved if measurements were more standardized. The Canadian federal government is being sued by the Assembly of First Nations, who are claiming that the government is still trying to assimilate Aboriginal children by underfunding child welfare, as well as underfunding the Aboriginal health and education systems claiming that it's systematic discrimination. And now the fate of child welfare programs on Canada's reservations is in the hands of a federal judge. In Australia, foster parents who are crying about their pay cuts get their money back after the government has a change of heart. In England, a social worker who worked with vulnerable children has been 
fired for concealing her love affair with a convicted sex offender, and another social worker gets canned for failing to report inappropriate sexual activity between two kids under the age of 13. Two more British councils have fined for data breaches, with Crichton Council getting hit with a £100,000 fine after a social worker has a bag with sensitive data regarding child sex abuse stolen while she was at a pub, and Norfolk County Council gets hit with an £80,000 fine after delivering sensitive child welfare information to the wrong address. A 13-year-old is about to stand trial for killing his foster mother. Parents who complained about their son's care at a hospital are threatened with social services. And social workers in Ireland are horrified by the ruthless and inhumane tactics of their English counterparts as they are finding themselves dealing with more and more cases of parents fleeing from England in order to avoid the legal kidnapping of their children. In entertainment news this week, Halle Berry's daughter says that she's afraid of daddy. Whitney Houston dies and the family is refusing to let Bobby Brown see his daughter claiming that he's just after her money. And Chelsea Handler goes on the Rosie O'Donnell show and claims that having sex with midgets is child abuse. In sports, Jerry Sandusky's daughter-in-law doesn't want the kids seeing the old man claiming that he's not safe to be around any children. And child sex abuse claims are going through the roof since the Penn State sex abuse scandal took off in the media. A juvenile court official in Sacramento, California is arrested on child molestation accusations. And an Orange County CPS agent fools a jury who finds that she didn't lie about about abuse accusations against an Orange County prosecutor who cut locks of his adopted daughter's hair as punishment for not doing her schoolwork. In Tennessee, a CPS agent is reassigned after being arrested for aggravated assault and losing custody of her own kids. In Texas, a mother is arrested after concocting a false molestation story against a father, which ultimately led to an Amber Alert in a child custody case. And in South Carolina, a teacher and school counselor are arrested after failing to report the sexual abuse of a child for two months. A frustrated Connecticut couple is offering taped recordings of their interactions with CPS agents for sale on eBay. In Florida, the child protective industry is trying to terminate the parental rights of a mom who is speaking out against the state, feeding her kids dangerous psychotropic drugs. In California, two parents are sued over their listing on the child abuse index, claiming that they were not afforded due process. And of course, they lost. In Illinois, parents are fighting for custody of their kid, where CPS agents claim that they are neglecting her medical care against the parents claimed that medical treatments were killing her. In Iowa, a judge orders a blog to be shut down claiming implied death threats and prejudicial statements regarding a family court case. In Indiana, a teenage foster kid with cancer has to go to the media in order to get approval for her cancer treatments in a system where everything must go through the proper channels, thus putting her life at risk. And the state also pays $210,000 while not admitting any liability or wrongdoing in the death of a foster child. In Maine, the mother of a missing toddler is threatening to sue the child protective industry claiming that workers are at fault for placing her daughter with the father against her wishes. In Pennsylvania, a mother is being hunted by police after attempting to rescue her two-year-old son from the foster care system. There's now a backlash against the foster parents who exposed the late baby Braxton's child abuse in a foster home. This after a black kid is removed from their home based on the claim that white people should not be fostering African-American children. In Massachusetts, a couple of parents want the phrase under God removed from the Pledge of Allegiance. And finally tonight, the state of Oklahoma's child protective industry is sued for $300,000 after keeping a mom in jail for 13 months after she hit her kid in an effort to protect her from being molested. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.